Okay, my name is Scott Newbern, and my co-authors are Erno Tronikowski and Narda Quigley, and the paper we wrote is Exploring the Evolution of Supporter Networks and the Creation of New Organizations. Well, a lot of the work that have been done on uh, networks, uh, which really involves the entrepreneurs and the people that help them start businesses, that's who we're calling supporters, it had really talked a lot about what those networks looked like, but it hadn't really focused on how those networks uh, are developed by the entrepreneurs themselves. And so we wanted to look into how entrepreneurs develop those networks and if there were certain types of networks that seemed to, to be more successful than not in, in helping them create new organizations. So uh, the University of Michigan has a data set called the Panel Study of Entrepreneurial Dynamics. And what they did is they collected data on entrepreneurs before they actually created the new organizations. It was in the process of that, of that uh, emergence uh, phase. Uh, we looked at the types of people that entrepreneurs reported having helped them with their organizations, th those that provided them with resources. And they could be anything from financial resources to um, human capital. Uh, to emotional support. So all different types of, of resources that entrepreneurs benefited from and that we know that entrepreneurs need uh, as they're creating new organizations. And what we found was that all entrepreneurs start at a different point. So we might have um, one entrepreneur that has a certain uh, set of supporters helping them at, at one given point in time and another entrepreneur that has different uh, set of supporters helping them. And what we found was that even though they might start at different points, they ultimately end up um, the successful ones uh, at the same point. And so specifically, we looked at the strength of those ties as being sort of the descriptor. And um, a lot of research has shown that entrepreneurs need a balance of strong ties and weak ties. So those that uh, we're really uh, emotionally connected with or have a long history with, as well as, as those that were, that were perhaps virtual strangers with uh, at the onset of the startup process. Uh, and we found that the, the more entrepreneurs merge towards or, or, uh, a, a balanced network where they have strong ties and weak ties and in-between ties, um, those are the ones that end up being successful. So what we think this can uh, do on the practical side is help um, uh, practitioners that are trying to start new businesses uh, understand um, and take a more strategic view of their networking. So we hear a lot about networking and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But what we're suggesting from based on our research is that they should take stock of, of what their portfolio of supporters looks like and recognize that different resources um, can come from different types of, of supporters. If they have a network dominated by mostly strong ties, they should take a, a, a strategic and an agentic path towards developing weaker ties because they can provide them with different types of resources perhaps that are, that are much different from the ones that they're getting already and vice versa. Entrepreneurs that have received a lot of resources from weak ties should think about the benefits that those strong ties can offer them and, and try to take a really strategic view of their networking practices and, and try to connect with those types of individuals.